All right, praise the Lord, saints. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm thankful for another opportunity to be in Rehoboth Sunday School where the learning never stops. God has given us the gift of life and another opportunity to learn more about him, to love him, to appreciate him, and to give him thanks and praise for all that he has done. So at this time, let us go before the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Loving God, we're thankful for this day that you have made. God, you have given us another opportunity in life. God, we thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for waking us up in our right mind. We thank you, God, for daily loading us down with benefits, God. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, Lord God. You didn't have to wake us up this morning, God, but Lord, you saw fit to keep us in your will another day upon this earth, God. So Lord God, we pray that you will help us to make the most of this day for your glory, God, and help us to reflect upon your word and what you accomplished for us upon the cross. We pray that you bless each one coming in, God, that you would impart a special word into their lives, a special blessing into their lives on this day. And we pray that each one coming in, God, will, will leave changed, God, and not the same, God. We want to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for who you are. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're thankful for another day that God has given us. We always want to give honor to God, who is the head of our life. Without him, we would be nothing. He saw fit to give us another chance, and for that, I am thankful. I want to give honor to the presiding bishop, our bishop, the Bishop J. Drew Shear. Um, we, we, he's also our jurisdictional prelate, so we appreciate him today. We're praying for him. Keep him in prayer, because the higher you go up on the ladder, the the heart of the devil fights. So let's remember to keep him and his family in prayer. I want to give honor to our pastor. He also requires prayer, not because he's a bad person, but because he's a blessing and because the devil knows who are the threats to his kingdom. And so we appreciate our pastor. Who is our pastor? Superintendent John Hall Jr., great man of God, great friend. And if you don't know him, you need to get to know him because Trust and believe he is a good person. <laughs> he is a blessing. We also want to give honor to our the elect lady, the fragrance of the home within the national ministries, and that is no other than the elect lady, Sheila Hall. She is also a blessing. You need to get to know the both of them because they are a, a dynamic duo for Jesus Christ. So we appreciate them today. We appreciate our brother, the elder Keith White. God bless you, man of God. We enjoy you, your teaching and your preaching, and we're looking forward to the next time you get an opportunity to bless us with the word. We also want to give honor to Sister Howard, the, our partner in the Sunday School Ministry. God bless you, Sister Howard. To you, the Rehoboth International Ministries family, God bless you. And to you, the family of God, the greatest family in the universe, God bless you. So sorry for all these shout outs, but I want to make sure I get everybody and I appreciate everybody. I appreciate my cousin, Pastor Mark Went, great man of God. Always, I, I try to catch him every Sunday, always in the uh, inspiration of, of truth and holiness. I also want to appreciate my immediate family. You know who you are, my cousins by the dozens, my mom, my dad, my sister, uh, friends, those that are the uh, citizens of Ray class. We appreciate all of y'all today. So God bless you today. So my exhortation for today is Jesus got up. You know, we say he got up. Uh, and there's a, there's a, a, a hymn that my cousin Heather shared. I saw it on the Facebook and it, it reminded me of when I grew up in church when I was a little fellow, one of the hymns they used to sing. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. And so we're thankful that God, Jesus Christ, did not go into the grave and stayed there, but he rose again triumphant. So to this day, so this day is one of the most, uh, is one of the highest celebrations in Christianity because it was the day that Jesus arose from the dead with all power in his hands. So if you get a chance, type in the comments, Jesus is alive. Now, in last week's lesson, we looked at the topic, Elijah, prophet of courage. And that was coming from 1 Kings chapter 18, covering verses 5 through 18. We covered the event that the prophet Elijah, uh, how he initially appeared before King Ahab uh, and he was going to tell him that it would not rain for a space of time. And this time ended up being three and a half years. Now, this was a judgment that came from God because of the king's wickedness and idolatry. And while this drought was taking place, 
God had preserved Elijah. He was nowhere to be found. They had searched high and low throughout all the kingdom, but he was nowhere to be found by the king. Um, but God had uh, made provision for him because he had prepared a widow woman in the city of Zarephath to sustain the prophets. So he was a prophet. Uh, when we looked at that lesson title, it was a prophet of courage, Elijah, prophet of courage, because he had to have courage in the face of possible death. You know, um, sometimes you have to step away from certain people when you tell them bad news. And that's how it was with uh, some of those kings back in the day that, you, you know, like they, they have a, a, a term that says, don't kill the messenger. <laughs> you know, it's not his fault that there is bad news. He's just relaying the bad news. But um, there's also people that relay good news. So in either way, don't kill the messenger. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Even though he faced possible death by the king, um, he was looked at as being responsible for this drought, but he was just a messenger. And it was, it was Ahab's wickedness that brought judgment upon the land. So in the face of death, he still was a prophet of courage. Um, uh, and we have to be people of courage as well in the face of uh, imminent danger, in the face of uh, persecution, we have to stand sure upon the word of God. Now, in this lesson, we look at the topic salvation and seal, and that's coming from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, covering verses 13 through 16, and it jumps over to verses 22 through 35. So we'll go ahead and get our scripture reading in. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score four longs, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while as they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And it jumps over to verse 22. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were, which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as a woman had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered? scriptures the things concerning himself and they drew nigh unto the village whither they went and he made as though he would have gone further but they constrained him saying abide with us for it is toward evening and the day is far spent and he went in to tarry with them and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them and their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight and they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he taught with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, how he was known of them in breaking of bread. Now, <clears throat> Here we are on a Resurrection Sunday. Uh, a lot of us we refer to it to Easter Sunday, but I like to call it Resurrection Sunday. Um, and here we are in the year 2021. You know, we owe our salvation to Jesus Christ because of what he accomplished upon the cross of Calvary. So uh, on Friday, uh, there were various ministries that broadcast on Facebook and other various social media platforms and you were able to partake in services such as seven last sayings of Christ. Um, and so all of those things reflect upon what Jesus did upon the cross. Now, John the Baptist speaking said, when he saw Jesus coming to be baptized, he said, behold the Lamb of God, which cometh to take away the sin of the world. Now, how could Jesus take away this sin? Well, he had to be that acceptable sacrifice, a lamb without spot and without blemish, one that came not to do his own will, but the will of his father that sent him. Um, he would be scourged. He would be beaten. He would be put upon the cross and die, but it would not end there. 
Uh, he descended into hell to pay the price for you and I. And sometimes when you tell people that, um, they think that just Jesus died, went to sleep, woke up, and got up out the grave. No, he went to hell to pay the price for you and I. He also talks about him preaching to the angels that were in chains of darkness down there. And so, um, uh, you know, Jesus went to hell to pay the price. Uh, not only did he pay the price in his in his body, but he pray, paid the price with his soul as well. And so um, not only did he pay for sin, um, but he paid for our healing as well. Uh, the scripture declares to us for by his stripes, we are healed. Um, and so every beating that he took, every strike that he took, uh, that strike is a strike for our healing. And so uh, we can say to cancer, we can say to diabetes, we can say to high blood pressure, my, my, my ailment is paid for and by the blood of Jesus Christ, I can be healed. Now, when we look at uh, the events surrounding Jesus going to the cross on the third day, he got up out of the grave with all power in his hand. Why? Because the price was paid and death could no longer hold him. So if you get a chance, type in the comments, I'm glad Jesus got up. Now, when Jesus arose, uh, Mary Magdalene was the first disciple to find out. She went and told the other disciples, and then Peter and John go running to the tomb to investigate. And when they get there, Jesus is not there. His body is gone. Now, as the news of Jesus's body being gone begins to circulate throughout the town, the chief priests pay the soldiers to start a rumor that his disciples came by night and stole his body away. Now, one thing <laughs> that the devil is good at is uh, spreading false news and bad news. Um, he will, if he could put doubt in what you believe and you act upon that doubt, then he's accomplished what he wanted to. And so if he puts any doubt in your mind that Jesus was alive, that Jesus is alive, or he was just a, a, a regular man and that he's dead and still in the grave, then, the, then, then de the devil has power over you. But you have to realize that Jesus was not just a man, but he was God in the flesh. God manifested in the flesh. Now, once doubt is introduced into the mind, it's a powerful thing. So uh, I know some of you may not believe, but um, just hear some bad news about a certain restaurant. Uh, hear about them messing around with the food, putting undesirables in there. And I, I doubt that you will go back there to partake. So <laughs> once doubt is introduced, now, even if it was a lie, you would side, err on the side of caution and say, no, I'm not even going to mess with it. And so that's what people do sometimes with the word. That they'll hear something doubtful and then it will cause them not to believe. But best believe that the word of God is 110 percent truth. When we look at the word of God, we are admonished to take the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And so uh, the devil, the wicked ones, they're going to throw their darts of doubt. They're going to throw their darts of unbelief. They're going to throw their darts to make it seem like God is against you. But your faith is what's supposed to quench all of that. Your faith is supposed to say the devil is a lie. <laughs> so going into our scripture reading. Um, verse 13, it says, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And so uh, that word three score is uh, score is 20, so three score is 60. So this uh, 60 furlongs away from Jerusalem, and this translates to about seven miles away. Um Mark 16, verses 9 through 13 says, Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, of whom he cast seven devils. And he, and she went and told them that had been with, them, with him as they mourned and wept. And when they had heard he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it to the residue, neither believed they them. And so I had I wanted to read that to give you um, a little more of a screenshot of what's happening here. And so it's talking about Jesus had died 
And then it says two of them, meaning two disciples. Um, they're heading to a city called Emmaus, which is seven miles from Jerusalem. Um, and, and so uh, verse 14 through 16 says, and as they walk together, two of these, together of all these things, they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And so see these two disciples, you know, Jesus is crucified, his body's taken down, put in the grave. Um, he is risen, but they are not aware of what's going on. And so as they are journeying to the city, they're talking about, you know, Jesus died, we were with him. You know, the, the government's after us, all, all of these things are going on. So they're talking about these recent, recent events concerning Jesus and his death. And as they are walking, Jesus pulls up and begins to talk with them. Um, and it says that their eyes were holding so they, they would not know him. Now, uh, in Mark 16 and 12, it says that he appeared unto them in another form. So uh, Jesus purposely went undercover in his facial appearance to be able to observe what he was talking about. Jesus was in a way incognito. Uh, he did not look the same as what they remembered. So um, they were right in his presence, but they were not aware that it was God himself. Now, have you ever had that experience where uh, you were uh, in a move of God, but didn't realize it until later? <laughs> Oh, type in the comments if you get a chance. Jesus, help me to recognize when it is you. Now, moving right along, verse 22 through 24 says, Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said he was alive. And certain of them which were with us, went to the sepulcher and found it even so as a woman had said, but him they saw not. So as they're journeying uh, to Emmaus, the stranger walks up. It happens to be Jesus, but they are not aware because they don't recognize him. And so uh, the stranger joins himself to them as they journey, and they basically are telling him uh, all the news of the things that they know that happened. Um, basically the news that they had received of the women. So it says certain women. Uh, and when you see that term, when it says certain, uh, it meant uh, women that they either knew or women that they knew about. So um, keep in mind that the phrase certain is certain. <laughs> now, they heard from the woman that Jesus's body was not there. That was Mary. Uh, and again, he says certain, meaning people that they knew, so meaning Peter and John. So remember, it was Peter and John that went to the tomb after Mary told them that Jesus' body was missing. So they were the two that ran to the tomb, and after they saw what happened, they went back and told the other, uh, the other nine. Now, well, we're moving right along, verses 25 through 27. Then he said unto them... <laughs> O oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now, as Jesus is hearing these words, um, Jesus basically has enough of the conversation. He's heard enough of the conversation and rebukes them for not understanding everything that happened to him. Uh, everything that was necessary, uh, everything that happened to him was necessary for the scriptures to be fulfilled. Now, that word fool means the lack of capacity for understanding. Um, and so um, here we go. You know, put your seat belts on. Uh, pray for me. You already know. You already know what's coming. And so, <laughs> so uh, uh, we're gonna give some 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 illustrations here so that you can understand what Jesus is saying. So, so uh, fool means a lack of capacity to understanding. Now, if if this was an episode of Sanford and Son, it would be like Jesus saying unto them, "You big dummies." <laughs> Uh, for 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 my for my island people for my island family, uh, it would be the equivalent of of Jesus saying unto them, uh, 
Them fool fool in. <laughs> oh, brother, when you need help today. Uh, uh, for those of you from the South, it, it'll be like Jesus saying they're elevated then don't go all the way up to the top. <laughs> like they, they, they have a hard time understanding. They, they, they got some issues going on. So you get the idea. Um, but when you look at what Jesus said, it's really pretty harsh. <laughs> you know, but what you have to realize is that unbelief is God's pet peeve. You know, uh, if you get a chance, type that in the comments. Unbelief is God, God's pet peeve. So if you want to get God upset very quickly, if you want to get God angry, you want to see another side of the Lord, um, start with unbelief. But no, don't do that. Uh, when we look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so, um, you know, that was always something. When we look at the nation of Israel, a uh, whole generation perished. Why? Because of unbelief, you know. And we're talking about a generation um, of, a, of, a, of a people. You know, you're not just talking about a little group of people. You're talking about um, thousands, millions of people that perished because they did not believe. So um, we must first believe that he is. Um, believe that he is what? That he's everything that we need. You know, whatever we need him to be, he is that. You know, God is, God is our everything. Uh, if you need him to be your deliverer, he is your deliverer. If you need him to be your healer, he is your healer. If you need him to be a provider, y'all don't want to have church today. Y'all don't want to have Sunday school. I'm trying to get us pumped up, primed, ready for service that's coming up 10.30 a.m. on Facebook Live on the Hope Within the National Ministries Facebook page. I'm already having church. And so uh, God is all of these things. If you need him to be a provider, he is that. You know, so we have to first believe that he is. And then there's just, uh, it's just a comma there, but he is everything. And so if you need him to be a mind regulator, you like, oh, I need I need him to be a mind regulator for Brother Went because Brother Went is crazy. And he is that. He is my mind regulator. Trust and believe. He is the I am that I am. Now notice when we look at this portion of scripture, uh, how that he called them fools. Notice he didn't just, put them on blast and leave them there. You know, he didn't just break them down, but he builds them back up. How does he build them back up? I don't see how he builds them back up. With knowledge. You know, it says that beginning with Moses and the prophet, he expounded unto them all, not some, but all the scriptures concerning himself. So anywhere that he was mentioned, he elaborated it, uh, elaborated on it to them. So that was a blessing, you know. Um, there's a lot of times, uh, we may not be aware of what's going on, but guess what? God has sent forth pastors. He sent forth teachers, prophets, apostles. What? Why? Because for the perfecting of the saints. And so God is, uh, we come to God as we are, but we don't stay that way. Uh, when we come in, when we come to God, God's like, okay, I see, I see what I could work with. I know what I want you to be. So here you are. I'm going to bless you. And these people are going to help you. And so we're thankful for the people that God has called. We're thankful for teaching. We're thankful for Rehoboth Sunday School. We're thankful for Tuesday night Bible study. We're thankful for every opportunity that we get to receive the word of God. And so if you get a chance, type in the comments, God's class is always in session. So um, Jesus explains to them that he had to suffer but then his glory would come. And what was his glory? Um, this glory was his change. Uh, he would no longer be the suffering savior, but he would be the glorified king. He would be the one that would be victorious over hell, death, and the grave. And, and when we look in the book of Revelation, it talks about, uh, uh, they asked, who is worthy to open up the book and the seals thereof? And, and what John says was he wept much because there was none found worthy. But then he, he became encouraged. He was encouraged by the angel and said, look, behold, the Lamb of God, he is worthy to open up the book and the seals thereof. So Jesus, Jesus is the one who is worthy. Why? Because he conquered everything. Now, 
when we look at the statement, how that uh, Jesus had to suffer, uh, we saw that he had to die, um, but now he is alive. And so uh, we see he went to hell, but could not stay there because he paid the price. He rose again and he got up. He got up out of the grave. And, and so if Jesus didn't get up, the scripture says we're still in our sins. If, if he didn't conquer the grave, then we were following him in vain. But I'm glad that he got up today. Now, uh, here's, a, here's another uh, illustration, another repetition. Sometimes people get tired of it, but I like saying it. <laughs> uh, when you go to the store and pay for your groceries, uh, after you pay for your groceries, you can walk out. But if you don't pay for your groceries, you can't walk out. Security is probably going to stop you at the door and say, what are you, what are you thinking? <laughs> and so uh, you, you have to have a receipt before you walk out the store with your groceries or with your items. And so uh, Jesus has the receipt. What was this receipt? What was the receipt? It was a receipt to show that he paid the price. It's a receipt to show that he paid for our sins. What was that receipt? The nail scars in his hands, the piercing in his side, the nail scars in his feet. And so Jesus has the receipt. He said, I paid it all. So thank God for that. Uh, moving right along, verses 28-29. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went. And he made as though he would have gone further, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. So as these two disciples are nearing their destination, Jesus is walking along with them, um, this stranger that they're talking to. And all of a sudden, he begins to expound unto them uh, the scriptures and everything. And But as they get near to their destination, Jesus keeps on walking as though uh, he was going to go further. But it says, but they constrained him. And so that word constrain means to compel or force someone to a particular course of action. So um, they were saying, man, it's getting dark. It's better for you to rest with us and continue your journey in the morning. Um, and so that's what those scriptures are talking about. So Jesus, it was like he was going to keep walking as they turned into where they were going to go. Jesus was going to keep walking. They compelled him to stay with them. Now, verses 30 through 31. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave it to them. And their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Um, so <laughs> when, we, when we look at this, uh, you know, jokingly, I could say uh, Jesus is kind of savage here. <laughs> you know, uh, God God has a sense of humor. Um, there, there was a meme on Facebook a while back, um, and it used a, a, a cartoon character named SpongeBob. Um, and this meme said, all right, I'm going to head out. Um, and so it shows the character getting ready to get up out of this chair. So um, when we look at this instant, Brother Wayne, where are you going with this? When we look at this instant, as soon as they recognize the mannerisms and realize that it was Jesus, Jesus by his actions was like, all right, I'm going to head out. So, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Almost like Jesus left them hanging. <laughs> like, now you see me, now you don't. So Jesus, as soon as they realized it was Jesus, Jesus bad. I don't know about you, but I know God has a sense of humor. Uh, and so, <laughs> so uh, Jesus vanished. Uh, they have a saying in the street, he went ghost. So Jesus went ghost on these two disciples. For <laughs> Now, uh, for those that are, for, for those of us that are proper, proper, we would say, wow, he didn't even say bye. Like, man, Jesus, what, what, what's going on with that? <laughs> now, um, the reason that I say uh, the catchphrase, uh, I would say our, the main theme or the catchphrase for the whole of Sunday school is that the learning never stops. And that's because God's word is alive. And so since it is alive, that means it adapts to our daily situations. And so we could read the same scripture every day and God could give us a new revelation with it. So your learning will never stop because the word of God does not stop growing. It doesn't stop uh, meaning one specific thing. So there are many directions uh, that we could go just looking at these two verses. You know, so for example, you know, we just shared, okay, um, Jesus 
He prayed, broke the bread, gave it to them. As soon as they realized it was him, they vanished out of his sight. But let's look a little deeper at it. Um, so I explained to you what the verse meant, but let's look at it another way. Not a different meaning, but in a different from a different perspective. So when we look at Jesus, what he did here, Jesus was always serving. Um, you know, he blessed the bread. He was the one that broke it. He was the one that gave it to them. Then it says their eyes were open. So uh, as soon as they realized his mannerisms, boom, wow, this is Jesus. Because, <laughs> you know, we, we could also look at this and say, uh, Jesus always prays over his food. Come on now. <laughs> you know, uh, and that's how come they, that, that's how they came to realize it was him. You know, sometimes um, we can get in a habit. You know, sometimes people get in the habit. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll say, um, you know, God, thanks for the meat. Let's eat, you know. But, 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 you know, how many people really take time to pray over their food? You know, how many people really take time to give thanks? And it was probably the way that he gave thanks that they were able to see, oh, you know what, this, this person is different. And they, they recognized at that point that it was Jesus. Um, so, you know, Jesus served them. It wasn't a free for all. It wasn't somebody else that took the bread and break it. No, Jesus was already that way. He was already a servant like that. And so he distributed the food after he prayed. So this was something that was familiar to the disciples when Jesus was with them. So, uh, and then also the fact that he expounded unto them the scriptures, like, wait a second, one plus one does equal two, <laughs> you know? Uh, so oh, it, it allowed their eyes to say, wait a minute. And as soon as the, the, soon as the, the letter W was coming out from the word, wait, coming out of their mouth, Jesus was already gone. <laughs> so praise God. So verse 32, we're just having fun here in Rehoboth Sunday School. You know, Rehoboth Sunday School should be fun. So, And I'm surprised it's going as fast as it's going. I really didn't want it to go this fast, but here it is. I'm having fun. So verse 32, it says, And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he taught with us by the way, and while he opened unto us the scriptures? So Jesus begins to analyze uh, rather, the disciples begin to analyze their total experience with the stranger. So they go back, they start rewinding the events like, okay, we're walking, we're heading to a maze, our hearts are weary, we're sorrowful, we're sad. The stranger comes up, he doesn't know what's going on, so we fill him in on what happened uh, and how that Jesus died. Um, and I believe in another portion of scripture, it's talk. Um, the disciples actually say to him, like, where where you been at? Like, you've been under a rock somewhere or something? You don't know? You haven't heard the news? Like, this has been spread throughout all the, throughout all the region. But as this stranger uh, joins himself to them and they, uh, they talk to him, tell him what's going on, Jesus begins to expound to them the scriptures. Then they get him to stay with them. And then he breaks bread and pray and then realizes Jesus himself. And there, it says that their hearts were set on fire while Jesus shared with them the word. And so um, how do people catch on fire? We share with them the word. Uh, if you get a chance, type in the comments. One of the ways to catch on fire is with the word. Now, when we hear the word, the true word of God, it should really do something to our spirit. You know, our, our soul should begin to to leap and catapult and do somersaults and all kinds of things. Why? Because we are we are gaining our spiritual sustenance. There should be there should be there should be a praise on the inside that we can't keep to ourselves. You know, a holler coming up from the depths of our soul. Uh, and so there's times we we jump to our feet. There's times we do a dance. You know, there's times we say hallelujah because hallelujah is the highest praise. So. Um, you know, help us, Lord, if our hearts don't burn, you know, and if, if our hearts don't burn when we hear that word, uh, maybe it needs to be revived. Oh, brother, when you were doing OK, you were doing well. I was praying for you. I know you kind of out there. Uh, you was being a little bit good today. But here you go. Uh, <laughs> maybe our heart needs to be revived. If, if it's not, if, it, if, it, if there's no response from the heart. Come on now. Brother, if our if our soul isn't doing anything, if there's no reaction, maybe maybe it needs to be revived. Uh, when we look at 
in the book of Ezekiel chapter 7, we read of a valley of dry bones and, and God asked the prophet, son of man, can these bones live? And the prophet answered, God, only you know. He said, God, thou knowest. Like, you, you're you the one that know. I have no idea. <laughs> but God tells him what? What does God tell him to start doing? Start playing music? Does, does God tell him to start uh, doing other things? No, he says to start prophesying. What's prophesying? He says start preaching. Oh, y'all don't want to have church today. It's all right. <laughs> but when you when you come into a dead situation, what should you start doing? Oh, oh, we need to start prophesying. So, 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 so that means when the heart is weary with sorrow and despair, uh, Jesus begins to share with them a word. He starts prophesying to them. He starts preaching unto them all the scriptures concerning himself. And so this what starts happening. Though their hearts were weary and sad, their hearts began to burn and began to revive. Now Psalm 61 and verse 2 says, From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So uh, my brothers, my sisters, as we look at what's going on in the world today. There's a lot of crazy things going on. There's a lot of things that bring sorrow to us. And the scripture declares here, Psalm 61 and 2, just remember that 61 and 2 should be easy to remember. 61 and 2, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the right that is higher than I. Our strength is now within ourselves. Our strength is through Jesus Christ. So praise God for that. Now verses 33 and 34, we are almost home. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. So <clears throat> if you notice, if you jump back to verse 28, you will realize that it was nearing the evening. But, but as soon as the brethren realized, as soon as these disciples realized that it's, G- it's Jesus, they endeavored to return to Jerusalem to tell the eleven. So um, they were seven miles away from Jerusalem. And so this journey, if they were on foot, this was going to take almost two hours to accomplish. So a uh, man, if you do research on Google, man walks at four, about four miles an hour. And if they were excited, maybe they went at five miles an hour. But either way, it was going to take them a little minute. It's going to take them at least an hour and a half <laughs> to get there if, if they got on a donkey. Same thing, donkeys walk at about four miles per hour. But if it was galloping, um, they, put, they would have probably got there a little quicker, no doubt. But these brethren decided to make the journey because this news could not wait. They just saw Jesus for themselves. They saw Jesus in the flesh. Now, if you get a chance, type in the comments, we need to see Jesus for ourselves. Now, verse 35, we are, we are in our last verse, and... Like they say, you don't have to, uh, we would rather have quality than quantity today. So by the grace of God, we'll probably be getting out early. So verse 35, and they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And so two disciples confirmed their story of what was talked about on the road to Emmaus and how that Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. So they go back to Jerusalem, they tell the brother, the brethren of a fact, yes, we saw Jesus. This is what happened to us. And he talks about how that Jesus did make himself known unto Simon. And so the, the, the brethren, the disciples there, they're, they're uh, interacting with their stories like, yeah, I saw him too. Uh, yeah, this is the experience I had. And so um, Jesus was making himself known. So Praise God for our lesson today. I know we went, it went by kind of quick, um, but um, this is that day that we reflect upon what everything that God has done, that we reflect, uh, not only reflect upon his sacrifice upon the cross, but the victory that came from him going to the grave, how that he arose victorious over hell, death, and the grave. He said, I have the keys of hell and death, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. So we're thankful that God, uh, he saw fit to love us so much that he gave himself as a sacrifice to pay the price for us. And not only just pay the price, but to rise victorious once again. So praise God, that concludes our lesson today. I know we're, we're out a little early, but that's okay. He's going to give you time to prepare. 
for Hobart's International Ministries, gospel service coming up at 1030. So you're going to get a chance to get you some fleshly sustenance if you have not already. So, um, but we're not going to leave you there. We're not going to leave you there. Um, you know, if you, if you have doubts, if you're not sure uh, where your eternity lies, we don't want to leave you hanging. We don't just want to uh, drop the mic and walk away, but we want to give you an opportunity to be saved today. Uh, you may have come into this class, and, you know, just wanted to learn a little bit more about Jesus. But when you think about your salvation, if you died right now, where would you go? If you have a doubt, we can remedy that today by the grace of God. And all you have to do is turn over to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. And read those verses of what it says. Is if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, if you if you believe in your heart the Lord Jesus, that God has raised us from the day, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. And so what you have to do is just say this simple prayer. Lord, I come to you today as a sinner. I give you my heart. I give you my life. I believe that you died upon the cross, but that you rose again for my sins, to, to pay for my sins. I give you my heart now. Come into my life. I promise to serve you. I give you the glory. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. And just like that, by faith, it says, uh, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so we believe, we, we, we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, and God will save us. And from here on out, we try to walk that walk. We try to be involved. We try to feed our soul with the word. So praise God. God bless you today. Appreciate each one coming in. Uh, please donate to the ministry. Please donate to the ministry. You can give on Cash App. The name of that is Dollar Sign The Rim. The Cash App tag is Dollar Sign The Rim. You can also give on the app Givelify. The name of the church is Rehoboth International Ministries. And the address is our old address, 31731 Shana Road in Warren, Michigan. And you can also give on the church website by secure credit card and debit card. Um, and the, the name of that website is www.rehobothinternational.org. So praise God. Next week, by the grace of God, we'll be in a lesson called Ezra, Faith, and Action Preacher. Faith and Action Preacher. And that's coming from the book of Ezra, chapter 10, covering verses 1 through 12. So praise God. Let's pray and dismiss. Loving God, we're thankful for your word that was shared today. God, we pray that you will touch our hearts, touch our lives. God, if we need a healing, God, we pray that you will touch our bodies in the name of Jesus. God, you paid for our healing upon the cross. You paid for our healing by your stripes. And we claim that healing. We claim the children's bread right now in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, if our heart is overwhelmed, God, Lord, we are looking to you, God. We are standing upon you, our firm foundation, oh God. Lord, help our minds, God. Help our spirits. Spirit, God, to rejoice in you, God. Help us to be an example of the believer. Help us to share your word, Lord God, that others may be saved. We promise to give you the glory, all the honor, and the praise for who you are. We pray that you bring us back to the appointed time to learn more of you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So praise God. God bless you, people of God. Hopefully you enjoyed this class. You know, sometimes in the morning, your brain is still trying to reboot, reboot so I was all over the place, but Praise God. Hopefully you were blessed. Hopefully you made it through. And by the grace of God, we'll see you next week. Don't forget to hit the share button when this video is over. God bless you, people of God. We love and appreciate you.